properties in southern Georgia Bay. Very hot topic right now. Many people looking to invest up here and there's so many different possibilities. What's really important when we're talking about short-term accommodation, STAs, is to understand how many town lines we have here with Simcoe County and Gray County and the six municipalities that we live within. Specifically, people may not know the lines between Collingwood and Blue Mountain, Craigleaf, Thornbury, Meaford, Wasaga Beach, Clearview. There's so many different lines and governments and rules for short-term accommodation when it comes to Airbnb and things of that sort. So today what I want to talk about is short-term accommodation at and around Blue Mountain Village. So when we think about STAs, there's so many condos around there and many people will come from the city and they will want to Airbnb their condo, but there's only eight condominium complexes up in and around the village that you can actually do short-term accommodations at. And there are very strict rules and very strict licensing against this and fines for anyone that breaks these rules. So let's break down what the basic types of short-term accommodation STAs for Airbnb in the Blue Mountain Village area. So first of all, on resort properties. Many people don't know this, but all of the hotels, the Westin, the Grand Georgian, Mosaic, all the ones right on resort, those are all condominiums owned by individuals. They have rules that is very specific. You'll have to reach out, DM me, send me a message. I can send you all the rules about how many days you can use it, how many days it has to be in the rental program, what all the fees are, how much money you can make owning one of these units, and the variables that come around with that. So there's on resort properties, the first one. The second one is off resort properties. These properties are referred to as legacy properties. They're called legacy properties because because they were built at the inception of IntraWest and even before that to be short-term accommodation rentals. Some are even considered commercial properties when you go to get financing. So that's another layer of things that you need to look into in terms of buying these properties and what it might mean for your financing. So again, DM me for specifics on that because that could be a whole 10 minutes on just ruling on that. Now let's talk about off-resort properties. These are the eight condominium complexes surrounding the village that are considered legacy properties and you can use for short-term accommodation rent as Airbnb and even manage yourself or hire a company. So the eight legacy properties around the resort are North Creek Resort, Wintergreen, Rivergrass, Sierra Lane, Snowbridge, Cache Crossing, Mountain Walk, and Chateau Ridge. We'll put these in the comments below as well on YouTube. So these properties were, were built either at the time of interest or even before you know, around you know 88 90 to be used as hotels basically for short-term accommodation up and around the village so they will always be grandfathered in they will always be legacy properties and you can always use them for short-term accommodation the great thing about these properties is that you can manage them yourselves and use them yourselves without any limits of how many days you can use it so you can earn some income on these properties while also using it for a family retreat for long weekends for holidays whatever it is even just use it in the shoulder seasons where the income isn't as high and then rent it out during the high seasons. So another thing is that when you rent your property through Blue Island Village, which is a great thing that Airbnb and all these short-term accommodation companies have brought in is when you were using it through the village, you had to make them all look the same because they were basically renting them as hotels. They didn't want people saying, I'd like room six or room nine because they have a bigger TV, but you can actually put a PS5 in your apartment. You can put an 85 inch flat screen. You can add espresso machines. You can do great things that make people request your unit and get more rental income through that. So the first two types, on-resort, off-resort condos, and then we have an area called Tyrolean Village. This place has existed since the days of Jozo Wider and all the parties back in the day when Blue Mountain was at its inception. And this, through the Martinick family, has just become a whole bunch of homes, chalets, singular duplex triplexes that just pile people in for short-term accommodation. Some are quite old chalets, some brand new ones are being built, which are outstanding, that are used for corporate retreats and things like that. So this whole area called Tyrolean Village a little bit south of Toronto Ski Club. This is a ton of very high producing short-term accommodation chalets. They sleep from six to 26. So if you have a chalet in this area, it is grandfathered in, you can always use it for short-term accommodation. The next one is areas or individual chalets that are actually grandfathered in. You can go on the Town of Blue Mountain website and read through what this actually means, but there are a few chalets around the region that even though that area does not allow short-term accommodation, they have been doing short-term accommodation for so long that when they changed the rules and sectioned it all off, they couldn't take away the licenses from these people and they're allowed to do it. So you can even click on the town website and click on a map and see where they are. Quick tip for buyers, it's a good idea to do that if you're thinking of buying a chalet in the area. Just go online and see if there's a short-term accommodation rental nearby you because 
every Saturday and every long weekend, holidays through the summer, you might have a neighbor with 16 cars in the driveway because they have a stag party or a bachelorette or whatever it is. It's a little tip just to find out, why is it so busy next door? Well, they might have a grandfathered in short-term accommodation chalet. Okay, so those are the four properties. And that is just in the town of the Blue Mountains, one of the six municipalities. If we go outside of that into Collingwood, the rules change and you're only allowed to have short-term accommodation if you live in the, the dwelling that you're in and they don't yet have licensing. So I think it's important that if you're considering coming up here and buying a short-term accommodation property, do your research online or reach out to a local expert to have a conversation with you to break down really how intricate this process can be and how many rules and regulations surround it because especially in the town of Blue Mountains, they are really enforcing this to keep short-term accommodation rentals in particular areas and not disrupt the neighborhoods that were once just weekenders and now become places where people are raising their families. It is a lot to learn. You don't want to wing it up here. You don't want to buy a property and realize you cannot use it for short-term accommodation. So make sure you reach out, call your local experts, and be sure that you are extremely well educated and well advised when you embark on the purchase of your newest investment property here in gorgeous Southern Georgian Bay.